Greetings from our studio. You're welcome to the Monday edition of Prime News on my media prime. Thanks for joining us or thanks for being a part of uh, the first edition of Prime News for this week. My name is Genda Peldrin Blanche King. We begin the news this evening with something uh, with news that is currently going on. Minister of Public Health, Minister Manauda Malachi, is currently taking part in a joint press conference delivered by Rene Manuel Sadi. Also present is the General Delegation of National Security. The press conference focuses on the situation of COVID-19 in Cameroon. We shall be back with uh, details of uh, this ongoing press conference involving ministers or state uh, ministers. In the meantime, uh, the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, in partnership with the Islamic Development Bank, has donated over 25 ambulances to the government meant to support the fight against COVID-19 in the country. The ambulances and other related equipment were handed to the Minister of Public Health, Manahuda Malachi over the weekend. Lasha Kinsley was part of uh, these, uh, this event which took place over the weekend. He compiled the following. Cameroon's Public Health Minister, Dr. Manahuda Malachi, over the weekend received on behalf of the government of Cameroon the first consignment of 10 out of 25 ambulances intended to strengthen the health system and COVID-19 response plan in Cameroon. Wonderful cooperation because it's uh, the financement of uh, uh, the uh, government of Cameroon through the, the bid, I think. So uh, our, our friends here, Mr. Jean-Luc, have uh, 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 due diligence to, uh, 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 to, to, to acquire this um, semblance for our, the reinforcement of our system, of our health system in Cameroon. I think uh, here we have uh, some more uh, best use of these uh, uh, vehicles in the fight against uh, coronavirus, on, as we, you, you say uh, uh, earlier. We have just uh, signed, uh, I think, a few days uh, ago, uh, the plan of uh, distribution of this uh, ambulance. The Islamic Development Bank and the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, as executing agency, financed the ambulances and other medical equipment worth 13.8 million U.S. dollars. The United Nations, we have been involved in supporting the government to strengthen the health system to fight COVID-19. And that is why you can see also the representative of WHO and UNICEF. We are all together uh, supporting the government of Cameroon, uh, strengthen the health system to fight uh, COVID-19. The delivery follows an agreement of a total of 27.440 million U.S. dollars signed between the government of Cameroon and the Islamic Development Bank to provide immediate response to COVID-19 through the provision of vital medical and non-medical equipment, including scanners, respiratory equipment, ambulances, and mobile radios for communications. Some 90 female pastors from the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon met over the weekend to review challenges faced by female pastors of the Presbyterian Church as they carry out their duties in the house of God. The event which took place over the week and presided over by the Right Reverend Fonkia Samuel Foba, moderator of the PCC, also focused on possible ways to empower these women in the service of God. Details with Clarice Ekoi. These are some 90 PCC female pastors drawn from different congregations across the national territory who over the weekend converged on PC Boya Town. This routine yearly activity is to take stock of their pastoral activities, highlight challenges faced, and chat ways forward. It's an annual event. It dates about 23 years now. Uh, when women began to join ministry, it was uh, an isolated experience because they were facing a lot of rejection. And the only way they could get together to empower themselves was to meet once a year and discuss their challenges and look for ways to move forward. I think we're happy that the women could come together. You know, everything we do in this church revolves around personnel. So when they come together among the many things that they discuss, they also discuss 
how to better their work in the parishes or where they serve. Presiding over this opening ceremony of the PCC Female Pastors Annual Meeting was Right Reverend Funky Samuel Forba, moderator of the PCC. Well aware of the negative effect of the sociopolitical upheavals still rocking some parts of the restive English-speaking regions, the Right Reverend Funky Samuel Forba boarded the role of these pastors in building the faith of Christians. This uh, topic was crafted due to the sociopolitical instability in our country where Christians were under tension and a lot of insecurity. And as shepherds of the Most High God, uh, we have come here to ask our female pastors who are like our mothers with very special gifts from God to be vigilant in the way they do ministry so that they will guide the flock in the right direction. Meanwhile, the female pastors also carried out humanitarian services such as a visit to inmates at the Boya Upper Farms prison where some items and the word of God was shared. Taxi drivers in Boya Southwest region of the country have expressed dissatisfaction following an incident involving two policemen and a taxi driver. The taxi driver was assaulted by the men in uniform and according to other taxi drivers, this is not the first time an incident as such is happening to a fellow colleague of theirs. Let's now join Eileen Sama for details in the following report. The two police officers in Boya were picked up by the said taxi driver whose name was withheld for security reasons over the weekend in Moliko on their way to the Boya Central Police Station near the governor's office. But upon arrival at Clark's quarters, the policemen reportedly engaged the driver in an exchange of words over transport fare. As the story goes, in the midst of the verbal exchange, the driver lost control of the steering plunging the car into a small valley after the policemen attempted aggressing him as well. The incident which occurred on Saturday night has sparked an uproar by taxi drivers in Boya, chief town of the southwest region, worried about the whereabouts of their friend said to be under police custody after the incident. However, it is not clear whether the dispute was over the amount to be paid by the policemen or an open refusal to pay the taxi fare. But colleagues of this victim of professional abuse are ready to fight for justice to be met. At. Humanitarian, life coach, and marriage counselor Henriette Tachanshan is no more. Her death was announced on Sunday, on Saturday, leaving her over thousands of followers short of words. She finally gave up after a long illness that got her bedridden for over a year. Details in the following report. For news of area touches death broke the internet on Saturday after over one year of health crisis. The philanthropist, life coach, and humanitarian has supported many individuals who found themselves in life-threatening conditions or at the point of giving up. Henriette Tachan Sham, formerly called Mommy Tacha, fought for justice, justice which many enjoyed due to her pushful and selfless spirit. She battled with cancer from late 2019 till her demise. She's known for calling out unscrupulous individuals and amending issues between couples. She was equally a blogger, running her rear touches launch on Facebook with multiple awards for her contributions to nation building. During the 2020 edition of the 237 Heroes Award, she was nominated in the category of Impact Social Advocate and Impact Blogger, where she won in the category of Impact Social Advocate. Henriette Tacha was born on November 24, 1975 in Limbe, to the family of Henry Tem and Paulina Ambun Tem, first out of six children. She finished her primary school in 1988, completed secondary to high school from 1993 to 1995 when she obtained her A-level in Secretarial Administration and Communication Skills. She had her HND in 1998 and applied for a master's program with the University of Douala in 2008. 
He finally graduated with a master's in business administrations in 2011. He leaves behind two biological children and hundreds of adopted kids alongside her parents and fans to mourn her. Fans of Goodwill have raised funds on several occasions to support her during her trying times, but that was all it was. Like she cried during her last post on February 7, 2020, I pray for strength to fight till the end. Lord, let thy holy will be done. As it pleased the Lord, she took her last breath in the afternoon of Saturday, February 27, 2021. May her soul rest in peace. You're watching verse 6 at 30, Prime News on my media prime. The steering committee in charge of following up electrification in underserved zones in Cameroon has adopted a budget of 30 billion francs CFA for 20. 21, the amount will be used to kickstart projects geared towards electrifying six regions with insufficient power supply in the country. At least 72 localities will benefit from uh, the initiative in the northwest and the southwest regions of the country. Details in the following report. The Rural Electrification and Access to Energy in Underserved Areas Project in Cameroon Piraz focuses on facilitating electricity access in the far north, north, Adamawa, east, northwest, and southwest regions of Cameroon. At least 687 localities are targeted for electrification, which will positively impact more than 350,000 homes. This project will have a huge impact. This means that even when the project ends, the Rural Electrification Agency will continue to accelerate electricity supply by connecting homes in need. When we signed the funding convention, we delegated do the powers to execute the project to a project implemented to the project implementing unit. And we remain as the, 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 the owner of the project and will supervise the activities of the project implementing unit. The project initiated by the Cameroon government is funded by the World Bank, European Union and European Investment Bank. And we know that this project is a very good project for, for the government. It's uh, also an important project for the, the World Bank. That it gives uh, access to people, uh, to electricity, and this will uh, improve their lives and give them uh, some means to, to uh, have some revenue. Electricity supply will be done through grid extension and mini grid systems. The project supports the commitment made by the EU and the World Bank to be global partners in promoting and implementing the 2030 Agenda and Sustainable Development Goals. Thanks, Bo Elvis, for that report. Ex-students of government Bilingua High School, Mankon, dubbed Hollywood icons, met over the weekend in Douala for a fundraising come together to support the alma mater affected by the ongoing socio-political crisis in the northwest region of the country. The association equally installed newly elected executives to head a union for the next Two years. A reporter from Quinta was part of uh, this uh, event. She compiled the following. I swear, I do solemnly swear to respect, observe, and protect the constitution of Hollywood icons. To observe, respect, and honor the constitution of Hollywood icons. Transparency, accountability, and equality are some of the promises made by the newly elected executives of the ex-students of government, Balingo High School, Mankan, the Hollywood icons. To expect from my administration uh, some high degree of accountability, transparency, equality, as well as gender equality. Their plan of action was revealed during the association's end of year party held over the weekend in Bonaberry, Duala First Subdivision, Lituwa region of Cameroon. The event 
which saw the installation of the newly elected executives, brought together ex-students from government Belingo High School, was equally an opportunity to raise funds in a bid to realize all developmental projects of the association. An ex-student association, that is one of our prime objectives, to ensure that we empower our, not only empowering our members, but as well as uh, improved on our alma mater. And uh, as of now, it is uh, a pity or oh, with sadness that uh, as we speak, our alma mater is in ruins. Meeting at a time when their alma mater is in ruins with students not going to school as a result of the ongoing Anglophone crisis, the ex-students from government Belingo High School Mankan promised to empower kids affected by the crisis. Then empowering them through uh, vocational training so that they can be self-employed. Considered a remarkable reunion as they met after several years of separation, the Hollywood icons were called upon to remain peace setters, thus raising the morale of their institution. According to uh, information from the ongoing joint press conference, Cameroon has moved from 25 uh, cases or uh, 25,000 cases of uh, positive COVID-19 uh, 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 positive uh, results to over 35 uh, positive cases calling on all individuals in the country to be mindful of anti-COVID-19 measures and uh, keep in mind all uh, anti-COVID-19 barrier measures to uh, eradicate the uh, pandemic in the the country. Meantime, let's talk sports with a topic content in the French language. PWD de Bamenda démarre bien la compétition des Lead One en battant Yafoot FC avec un but à zéro samedi dernier au stade d'Amadou à Yidjo, à Yaoundé, en match d'ouverture, première journée pour A. La cérémonie de remise des médailles et trophées par Sedum Bombo Joya et sa délégation aux champions du Cameroun de la saison 2019-2020. PWD de Baminda a précédé celle consacrée à l'ouverture du championnat Elite One et tout 2021. Cette cérémonie n'avait pas eu lieu en raison du coronavirus. Les Abakwa Boys ont manifesté la joie avant d'aller garder les dites médailles et trophées pour rejoindre la pelouse. Le coup d'envoi a été donné par le président par intérim de la FECA Foot, Sedum Bonjoya. La première période du jeu s'est achevée avec zéro but partout. FC de Yaoundé 2 tenait bon devant le champion puis WD. Seulement, à la deuxième manche, la donne change. C'est ainsi qu'à la 48e minute, puis WD de Baminda marque l'unique but de la rencontre par François Yegue, premier buteur. Il a été nourri d'une belle passe de Zia Besolo. Parlant du deuxième match, toujours au stade d'Amadou Aïdjo, Renaissance de Ngoumou, a chicoté à S. Matelo de Douala, deux buts à un. Dans le classement, cette équipe et PWD totalise chacun trois points dans le groupe A. Au programme, pour la suite de la compétition, il est tout le 6 mars à 15h. Bafoussam contre Dynamo de Douala, Pontia contre Ofta, Léopard de Douala contre Unisport de Bafan, Gaoundiré contre AS Fab et Stade de Bertois contre Fauve Azu Elite. Pour les Lidouane, première journée, le 7 de ce mois, 20 équipes vont jouer dans les différents stades. L'on n'attend plus que les résultats. Still in sports, Tunisia will face Uganda this evening at 8.30 p.m. ahead of the semi-final match in the ongoing under-20 African Cup of Nations taking place in Mauritania. Tunisia defeated Morocco four goals to one during a post-penalty to qualify for today's semi-final. And that's how we conclude or end today's edition of Prime News on my media prime. Thanks for being with us. See you tomorrow, God willing, at 6.30 for another edition of Prime News on my media prime. Lasha Kinsley coordinated the news produced by Ewane Eli Nolinga. My name is Genda Peljum Blanche King. Stay with my media prime at 7 p.m. Cameroon time. Kumlena will be live to talk about issues affecting the world, Cameroon and Africa. Be mindful of all anti-COVID measures to uh, send the pandemic completely away from the country. Be safe. Good night. Happy viewing.